okay guys um <laughs> okay this is kind of my first video on youtube um and this is a new year so i decided to just start it out at once now there's this new concept that came out in python 3 uh, i wonder why i'm saying python 3 because right now we have just python 3 so if i say python it means python 3 we don't longer have python 2 so it's no longer supported okay so we have this new feature that's they introduced in um python 3.7 um it's called data classes so like you can see the caption here said and um, dishing out the innate and equality function though you can dish out a lot of functions with these data classes now right from one said you know that python has this way of coming up with one-liners where you can use one line to do a whole lot of things when it comes to conversation people don't generally like that but when it comes to programming we love that a lot okay so we're looking at data classes how it makes things quite simple for us now just to remind you guys it's meant for python 3.7 upwards so if your version of python is not python 3.7 uh, you might be having some difficulty making use of this however if you're using python 3.6 there's still a way you can still work around with it and um, all you need to do is to install the data classes using pip install data classes and uh, with python 3.6 you can you can still work with it but with python 3.7 and above you don't need to install it it already comes pre-packaged with your python interpreter okay so i'll take you through the journey we use the conventional way of creating classes thereafter we are going to use data classes so that you're going to see how beautiful um, it is to work with data classes. So let's just start right away. Um, I'm, I'll be using an example on um, vectors. Um, if you don't have the concept about vectors, I think I'll explain that along the way. So as usual, we create a class by using the keyword class, then the name of the class. I'm going to call this vector. Um, conventionally, what we do, we come up with a diff, and then we create our init method which takes the first parameter to be the object itself and since i'm creating a vector let's assume that this vector can accept um, it's two-dimensional it, it's it has just the x and the y component and all i have to do now is to say self dot x equal to x and self dot y equal to y with this I've created a blueprint, which is what we call a class, and I can instantiate instantiate objects or um, what should I call them? Object generally out of this blueprint. So let's say I want to instantiate v1. I'll say v1 is vector, and I have to pass in two parameters, four and seven. With this, I have v1. I can see what v1 has when it comes to the first parameter x. And the set is 4. I can say v1.y and it's 7. Let's instantiate another one v2. Um, v2 will be taking, let's say, minus 8 and 7. Same thing, v1, our uh, less v2.x, we have it to a minus 8. Let's verify if v1 is equal to v2. And we note where that v1 is not equal to v2, so it will be giving us false. But what if we instantiate another object, v3, and we make it in such a way that it has the same attributes as v2? So now if I check for what v2 is, or v2.x, v2.y, v3.x, v3.y, they have exactly the same thing. Um, so v2 it's meant to be equal to v3 we should be expecting a true out of this but we are getting false now the reason we are getting false is we've not defined um, a magic function a magic method that is meant to take care of this concept of equality because when we talk about equality when it comes to vectors we are looking at their corresponding components being equal okay and again, if I check for what v1 is, just by typing v1, or I say print v1, um, you can see what it's giving to us here, something that is not meaningful. It's giving us that, yes, this is 
an object inside of this main method inside of this um, very for, very um, file we are looking at it is of class vector and this is the address of the object something that is not meaningful in general so what we can do to take care of this using the conventional approach is to come back to our class and create two special methods one of them is going to be the repar method okay so all it does it takes the first parameter or the only parameter called self and it's going to return something now you can return anything you want you like anything you want it to return but it's always advised that um, you return something you can use to rebuild this object if, if need be that means in this case I should return something of this nature vector I have self dot X comma I have self dot Y okay so this is what I have I'm um, in such a way that if I go back to instantiate okay I have an error here yeah that should do if I go back to instantiate v1 and instantiate v2 and then I want to look for what v1 is now it's giving me something nice it's saying v1 is a vector of 4,7 I can even make it to look more pretty by saying something like um, x equal to and y equal to so this time around let's go back and see what we have so check what v1 will give to us now so v1 is saying x is equal to 4 the same thing would happen if we check for v2 and then we check for v3 so if i say v2 okay so this is the usual way we go about taking care of this printing aspect so the wrapper function takes care of the fact that whenever you print this method instead of it to give you something that is not making sense something that is meaningless to you it's going to give you a representation that you could possibly use to rebuild this um, object if need be okay the next the one we have to look at is v1 being equal to v2 or v2 being equal to v3 so we know to where that v1 v2 and v3 they have the same parameters 8 and 7 the parameters i have in v3 are minus 8 and also 7 so what i want to do now since they have the same parameters they are meant to be equal but this time around they are not equal okay and that's because we've not created a method for that so we can create a method for this by simply going back to a class and then bringing up another method that they call the eq this used to check for equality um, between two objects of a given class okay and it takes in two parameters the object itself and then some other objects we can we usually call it order in python um, you should know that by now so what we want to do is to see if what we have here if the x value of v1 the x value of v2 the y value of v1 and the y value of v2 if they're actually equal okay so what we have to just say here is um we want to return a tuple having self dot x so we'll compare this with that of order dot x we do the same thing for self dot y and we compare it to that of order not self but this is going to be order dot y and this also has to be order dot y so what we are doing here is we are comparing self dot x okay to order dot x and self dot y to order dot y so whatever makes meaning when it comes to equality between two vectors or between two objects whatever object you're creating that's what you have to impute here so this is what makes me when it comes to vectors that the first component must be equal to the first component the second component must be equal to the second component component wise they must be equal okay so now if i run this again and then i instantiate v1 instantiate v2 and then instantiate v3 
now let's see if v2 and v3 are actually equal so um if we try this is v2 equal to v3 now it has changed to true initially remember it was giving us false but now since v2 and v3 have the same attribute the same component it's saying yes they are equal but if you try for v3 and v1 it's going to be giving you false so this is a conventional approach when it comes to creating classes and creating objects okay but now we have these new methods called data classes okay with data classes i think you can do all of this with just four lines of code instead of what we have here which is about eight lines or so we can do it with just four lines of code and how do we do that the first thing you have to do is to import the model so we say import or from data classes we import data class that's the first thing we have to do then we use a decorator okay yeah um, you don't really need to bother much about what decorators are if you want um you can read them all but we have a decorator called data class um in simple terms i think i should just explain in simple terms what a decorator does is it tries to modify the functionality of a given object or a given function a given class that you can't really access the codes okay so we are trying to modify the functionality of some class so we are adding something else to some other class or some other method or some other function that is already in existence that's the um work of a of um um a decorator so here we're using the data class decorator because we've imported it now what i have to do is let's call this new vector okay and i'm going to use pascal casing so we have new vector and all i have to do now remember what i did there was to create the init method instantiated my x instantiated my y and the rest of that but this time around what i need to do is to say x column int y column int and that is all okay now this thing we have here int we call this type hint or let's call them floats instead of ints because objects and vectors can actually take in floating numbers they mustn't just be integers so we say x column float y column float um we know where that python is dynamic so we might be thinking hey with this is this not taking away the dynamic nature of python that's not the case these are just called type hints okay um you can do without them but when it comes to data classes you must have them there without you having them there your class will not be defined so with this i've done everything as um, what i have here everything um let's just try it out and see so let's create something else v4 let's say v4 is new vector one comma five and v5 is new vector minus 3 comma 5 or let's say v5 is new vector 0 comma or let's make it to be equal to the first one 1 comma 5 so this time around if i check for what v4 is automatically it's created what we did using our repair function and if I want to check what V5 is, the same thing. V6, is it V6 I have there? I created V5 twice, I think so. So let's make this V6. So if I want to check what V6 is, or let's V5 again, and V6 this time around, and this is what we have. So is V4 equal to V5? That's a false is v4 equal to v6 and that's a true so you can see v4 and v6 they're actually equal because that is how we define them to be now generally objects of this nature are not meant to be equal by the concept of um, an object being stored by reference but um, based on how it is being defined in this situation they are going to be equal if you don't want it that way then there's a way you can turn off 
this their equality function and create yours for them to be equal okay so that's all for this video